Natalie and Rabbi Anna are taking a trip out to New Jersey to meet Freddy and Alana. Two Jewish women whose failed arranged marriages led Freddy to set up a charity that helps women escape the chains of unhappy arranged marriages, whatever their religion. Wow. So you were Does that look 19? Like you? I was 19, you were yeah. 19. Can you tell us what it meant to be set up, like what it meant to have an arranged marriage? What did that entail? You're 18 years old, you've never spoken to a guy before, you're not allowed to go out and meet somebody on your own, all of a sudden, you know, the matchmaker sets you up with somebody, there's a lot of pressure, all your friends are getting married already. You have just a few dates where you have to decide you want to spend the rest of your life with this guy. I mean, I was uh, a lonely, unhappy housewife. I mean, it was, uh, it was a terrible life, and especially as I started realizing I want out of this, it, it was unbearably painful. After 10 years, Freddie finally built up enough courage to leave her marriage but this left her with nowhere to turn. My family considered me dead and went through the mourning ritual for me as if I had died. That wasn't only because I tried to get a divorce, that was also because I stopped covering my hair. At the time I was still religious, but my first act of rebellion was to stop covering my hair, which is required of married women in the community. That's and a very frightening step, very. Frightening. It was like walking outside naked, walking outside it is like, without yeah, a head covering. It is like that. You know, I will I, never forget the for a couple to divorce under the eyes of the Jewish Orthodox Church, they must apply for what is known as a get. But for a Jewish woman, this has its own set of problems. I mean, do you want to explain the difficulties and how you get a get and how you get around getting a get? <laughs> Only a man can grant a, a get or a Jewish divorce. A woman is not allowed to divorce her husband under Jewish law. Now, for years, for thousands of years, men have used this power against their wives. Okay, you want, you want a divorce? Fine. Uh, give me custody of the children. Absolve me of all child support and alimony. Have your father write me a check for, uh, for $250,000. I mean, this, is, this has been going on for years. And then a woman whose husband won't give her a get is called an aguna, or a chained woman. And she's, she's really, I mean, there's absolutely nothing worse in the Orthodox Jewish community than being stuck as a single woman. You can't date, you can never remarry, you're basically a non-person. You cannot this move on. Yeah, so we are both getless and proud of it. Meanwhile, in New Jersey, Natalie and Rabbi Anna are curious to find out how Freddy and Ilana coped in their unhappy marriages. What was the turning point? What stage did you just go... Right, that's it. It took years to even get my mind to the place where leaving was uh, an option. Five children, no money, no college degree, you're stuck and so you resign yourself. There's a resignation. The turning point was college, I'd have to say. When I started going to college, it's like I was hit on the head, like, like a blind went up. And all of a sudden I said, okay, wait a minute, there's a whole big wide world out here. It makes me really sad, I suppose, to know that there are elements of the Jewish community that are so oppressive and that are so against individual choice that it that it forces people away from any kind of Jewish identity at all. I wonder if I would be an atheist today if I had grown up with, and they always ask me, don't you miss the joy? And I'm, what, what joy? <laughs> was there joy? joy? Did, I, did I miss the joy? There was fear, there was no joy. Amazing. We were driving through um, Lakewood, where we used to live, which has a huge ultra-Orthodox community. Women were there in their long black skirts and head coverings, and my kids were in the back seat wearing their regular clothes, like looking like just like regular American kids. And my daughter from the back seat all of a sudden said, Mom, thank you. And I said, for what? And she said, thank you for setting us free. And she used the words, setting us free. After 10 years, when you stand and feel the wind in your hair, um, Should I tell them what I did with my wig? Tell them. <laughs> I went uh, to a local beach and I threw it into the Atlantic. Oh. And I watched it float away. <laughs> Why see ya? <laughs> One day we might find it when it gets yeah, to our yeah. shore. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> imagine the poor <laughs> if, you, if you like the wind through your hair, you guys should get Harleys. Yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think we should. What do you think? I think. <laughs>